This is the first in a series of videos detailing how to set up free NAS on an old computer or a home built home server. Uh, if you want more information about why you would do this and what it can do, check out the full guide on Lifehacker below. This is just going to be a walkthrough of the more complicated steps. You're going to install FreeNAS by going to their website, downloading a disk image and transferring it to a USB flash drive. Once you put that flash drive in your server and boot up from it, you'll be given an IP address. Type that IP address into a browser window on your main computer and you'll be greeted with the FreeNAS web interface. Now the first thing we want to do is to give ourselves an account and a password to access this interface because otherwise it's extremely insecure. So we're going to go over to account, admin account and change the admin user. I'm just going to give it a username that's my name, Whitson Gordon, and click change admin user. I'm also going to give it a password to make sure that I'm the only person that can actually access this, not just anyone on my Wi-Fi network. Once you've done that, there are a few other things you'll probably want to do to configure your server. We're also going to create a user that has permission to access our files. This is a very different kind of user than the one we just created, but I'm just going to give it the same name. And I'm going to give it the primary group wheel because I am an administrator of this machine. You'll also need to type in your full name and a password. Again, this can be different than the password you just created. That was for the web interface. This is for the files on your machine, essentially. You probably won't need to change your user ID from 1001, but I'm going to change it to 1000 because I have files that already use that user ID as a permission. If you're transferring files from FreeNAS 7, you may need to do this as well. I'm also going to create a group since I have other people in my household that are going to need to access this computer, but I don't want to give them full privileges. Again, you may or may not have to do this. Check out our guide for more information on how this works. Next, go over to that settings tab and set the protocol to HTTPS. You'll also want to change your time zone if you don't live in Los Angeles and click save. You may get this message, just click proceed anyway. Lastly, head down to network global configuration. Give your NAS a host name if you want something other than the default and under default gateway, type the IP address of your router. This is only really necessary if you want the NAS to access the internet, like if you're going to use transmission to download torrents, which we'll discuss later on. Once that's done, you're all set and you're ready to start adding drives. Check out the next video for more information on that.